uh, it's very good to see you after a long break. Today's lecture, this lecture is for the students of first year. And uh, today we'll spend some good time together because I will be repeating uh, the sixth chapter on the PowerPoint, which we normally, that's how we normally do in our classes. Uh, so I'll repeat that for you. Secondly, uh, we have, uh, I will answer some questions which students ask me regarding the assignment. And then we'll also do our next topic, which is the uh, solubility product. So we will start our lecture and uh, we are on our sixth chapter, uh, which is chemical equilibrium. And as mentioned, this uh, chapter is about reversible and irreversible reaction, technically uh, reversible reactions only. Uh, we know irreversible, which uh, proceed to completion, irreversible, which never complete. This is an irreversible reaction. Calcium carbonate can break into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Reverse is impossible. Uh, these reactions are the examples of irreversible reactions. Reversible reactions are those which uh, proceed in both directions, forward and backward, simultaneously. Simultaneously means at the same time, it is going from left to right, and it is also going from uh, simultaneously. It means that at the same time, both reactions are taking place. Uh, so, um, both forward and backward reaction takes place simultaneously. Uh, they never go to completion because they, they continually to happen throughout the time. Uh, ammonia's formation, hydrogen iodide's formation, sulfur trioxide's formation, they all are important uh, irreversible reactions. Uh, next thing was chemical equilibrium. It's a state in a homogeneous reaction. Uh, let's say A plus B gives C plus D. In the beginning, only forward reaction is there because no products are formed. No products are formed in the beginning, okay? But as soon as the products form, as the reaction starts and CD start to form, what happens? Now CD start to react and they start to form AB. Now AB forming CD and CD forming AB when both process continue at the same time, a time will soon come, very soon a time will come. Finally, a state will be established when the rate of forward reaction and reverse reaction will be equal. This state is known as the chemical equilibrium. Uh, and the reaction continue, there's no stopping. It's a dynamic equilibrium, if you know, there are two equilibrium, static and dynamic. So the chemical equilibrium is uh, dynamic by nature. So in this way, we have learned it already, just a revision, okay? Uh, chemical uh, uh, equilibrium, you know, continues, okay? The graph which shows the equality, uh, the, the plateaus are showing that the uh, rates are not changing with time, which means equilibrium has been established. The law of mass action, if you remember active mass is mole per dm cube, if you know the rate of uh, the rate at which a substance reacts is directly proportional to its active mass and the rate of our chemical reaction is directly proportional to the active mass of the reactants. Uh, you know Goldberg and Watch, the people who basically uh, proposed this statement and if you want to read clearly they were also related to each other somehow. You can see that Gulberg was the brother-in-law for the Wag, and they together formed this, okay? Uh, then uh, next is basically, we can see that they proposed the law of mass action. Now the law of mass action was proposed by these two Scandinavian 
scientists. And then we know how to drive the equilibrium expression. We know this. This is, we have done before. Forward reaction, K1. Reverse reaction, K2. When at the equilibrium, they are equal. So when they are equal, uh, then you go like that. Hmm? K1 upon K2 is a new constant, which is called Kc. Kc means uh, it is the, uh, for concentration. K for constant and C for the concentration. So it's a, it is the Kc is the ratio of product of active masses of the product to the product of active mass of the reactants. That's how you define Kc. The expression is called equilibrium constant expression. Kc is only depend upon temperature. So for different reaction, you can write uh, your own value of Kc very easily. The, the products here will be at the top and the return will be at the bottom. That's how you can write all of those three. For gases, it's Kp, you know, because we don't trust the concentration of, gas, uh, of gases because gases have a very much variable uh, volumes, okay? So that can cause the, cause the issue for that. And then we have, uh, uh, for uh, gases, we have Kp and Kp and KCr related by this formula, which we have derived thoroughly in our previous lectures. Uh, so for different reaction, there are different uh, comparisons shown here. I should, uh, okay. We have done it before. If you guys remember in our previous lectures, okay, when that means that uh, in these three reactions we have different uh, comparisons of Kp and Kc which we have done. Then the application, there were two applications of Kc, predicts the direction. If the ratio equals to Kc, that means the ratio is at equilibrium. If the ratio is more than the value of Kc for that reaction, it means we have much more products than reactants. There will be a reverse reaction now. And if the ratio is less than Kc, that is what we want. It means the reactants are more, there will be a forward reaction. And a larger value of Kc means uh, a high con uh, more products, unstable reactants, very small value of Kc, means very stable reactants and very, very little product. And, but the normal values of Kc are very much moderate. So when uh, this is what C is when it is moderate values. I'm doing it quickly because we have done all these slides. We have learned all these topics already. Okay, you can pause and uh, read the content anyway. When we had many problems, uh, we also have learned the problem skills, the plus x and the minus x skills. Um, these are additional problems. You can uh, pause this, this video and copy these problems and try to solve it. I will recommend you to do it. The method is same. The way of sol uh, solving is same. Okay. All modes are given. So when all modes are given, what we do is we just divide to find the case. You know this. So all these problems are extra problems, which if you want to enhance your uh, skills, you can pause this video and copy these problems and then you can solve again. All right. Then we came to Lee Chatelier's principle, which was our previous topic. Uh, which states that when any constraint is applied on a balanced chemical reaction, the chemical reaction will take its way in such a way in order to minimize the effect of that constraint. Now, what is constraint? A constraint is a change. Okay. Uh, what is that change? Okay. What is the meaning of constraint or stress? Change the concentration of either reactants or products increase or decrease okay um, if you increase reactant reaction goes to the forward direction to make products you want it 
if you decrease reactant, then that also means you are increasing products. In uh, in the ninth question, the E part, many students were asking me how to solve that. Removing one of the products is also meaning increasing the reactants. So forward direction. Uh, to is pressure only applies to the gaseous equilibrium. Three is temperature applies to exothermic and endothermic differently. For endothermic, high temperature is basically reactant. Okay. For exothermic, you know, uh, high temperature is basically you are increasing product. So you can understand how the ratio varies with the value of uh, uh, Kc compared with the value of Kc. Catalysts affect both uh, the forward and backward rates. So uh, this is what if you increase the concentration, you know, since we have discussed these topics already once in our uh, lecture, so we, I'm not going to repeat all these points. You can do it if you want to study it, although we have done it. All right, that's how you increase concentration of the reactants. You get forward direction. If you increase products, uh, here, explanation, increasing reactants. Uh, if you decrease the products, that's also increasing reactants. If you decrease the reactants, that's increasing products. So the, it works both ways. Temperature affects only endothermic. Most reactions are endo or exothermic. So in the if it is if it is if it is endothermic, the reaction is actually absorbing heat to to proceed in forward direction. So high, more heat, good. Less heat, bad. So this is how you can predict it very easily. We have done it before. Pressure affects wherever n plus n is not equal to x plus y. If they are equal, there is no there is no effect. We have done it. I have seen the homework as well, and I hope that you can uh, pause this video and read the content. And again, if you want to reinforce your concepts, you can do that. Uh, this chart here gives a summary of uh, Lee Chartier's principle how this uh, is working and uh, for stress if the stress is a concentration substance it goes away from that substance okay why why it goes away because the extra concent uh, added should be used up so in order to use it it's go away from that it if you add a b a rate direction goes towards c d so that a b which you have added extra should be used up Got it? That's how it is. Decrease concentration of the substance, uh, it goes towards that substance. If you decrease the reactants, reactions go towards the reactants because decreasing the reactant means increasing products. If you decrease the products, that means reaction goes towards the products. So we are now you have higher reactants. Okay. So removal of CO2 was basically uh, because of that. All right. When you remove CO2, it goes uh, towards CO2 because CO2 is the product of the chemical reaction. GG. So this is how it is, okay? If you increase pressure, it goes towards fewer molecules. This chart will give you, give, will give you um, a clear uh, message, clear understanding of the Lee Chartier's principle overall. So you can see that one, okay? Uh, increase in the sum of pressure goes towards the fewer molecules, okay? And if you decrease pressure, it goes towards the more moles, all right? If you increase temperature of system, uh, away from the heat in the exothermic, right? So this is how you can understand it. Now, uh, there are many problems on leach Chatelier principle, which I gave you as a homework. And today I will uh, uh, be uh, giving some explanation on those uh, uh, before I go further. So I'll, I'll start with the, the ninth problem, which I have right now in uh, front of me. And this is uh, like uh, calcium carbonate forming calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. So, if I have to make you understand this one, I should first, with, I better should uh, 
draw it for you, write it for you, so you can understand it easily. So for example, we have, this is the ninth question, CaCO3, and then it becomes uh, CaO plus CO2. Now, you can see in this reaction very easily that there is a one mole of reactant, one volume on the reactant side, however, one and one, two volume on the product side. Uh, and they also mention here that the reaction is basically endothermic by nature. So delta H value is basically positive. Positive 176 kilojoule per mole. Now, this is the uh, ninth question, if you guys remember, in the assignment, problem number ninth. So many students have done it very correctly, I appreciate that. But some of you have been uh, struggling with it, so why not we explain that for you, okay? Now, I, I won't write the question, but I will just explain the answers. Like the first was adding CO2, sorry, adding CaCO3. If you add CaCO3, what's going to happen? Reaction will go away from CaCO3. It, mean it, is go, it will go in a forward direction. All right? So you have forward direction. Got it? Because increasing CO, CaCO3 uh, will cause the ratio product upon, this is what you're going to write it in your answer. By increasing CaCO3, the ratio of the products upon reactant will decrease from the value of Kc. And in that case, in order to reach the Kc, reactant will be consumed and you will get more products. So this is going to be a forward direction. Next question was adding CaO. B is adding CaO. Now, if you add CaO, it is a basically a product, okay? So it will go in a reverse direction. It will go towards the CaCO3, reverse. You can write there that according to Lee Chartier, with every answer you must write according to Lee Chartier principle, okay? When we add any substance to, in, uh, to a balanced chemical reaction, the reaction goes away from it. So if we will add CaO, it will go away from CaO towards CaCO3. And reverse, it will be dominant. You can uh, explain it this way. You can also explain by, by the ratio. That the ratio will get more than Kc. That that's also a way to explain uh, the effect. C was decreasing the volume of container. This, is, this was also asked from many, by many students. What do you mean by decreasing the volume? Actually, decreasing volume means increasing pressure. Did you guess that? Yeah, decrease in volume technically means increasing pressure. Am I right? Yes. When you are decreasing volume of the, con because all the product and reactant are present in the same container. So if you decrease the volume of the container, what are you doing? You're increasing the pressure. So when you increase the pressure, what, what happens? The reaction goes towards fewer moles, fewer volumes, lesser volumes. You can see here, the products have two, two moles, one mole of CaO, one mole of CO2. So two moles on the right side, one mole on the left side. So if you decrease pressure, it will go towards the left side and reverse reaction will be dominant reaction all right and i hope you understand increase in volume means decrease in pressure you can decide as uh, per the question okay the d part of the question is raising the temperature increasing the temperature no you know that you can write the explanation in two ways 
The positive 1 plus 176 kilojoule per mole indicates that this reaction is endothermic. So endothermic reactions proceed by absorbing heat. The more heat they absorb, the, 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 the faster they go towards making the products. Okay? So a high temperature will make them absorb more heat and quickly and it will make more um, uh, like product for you. So this is going to be forward. And now, last but not the least, I am writing like this, but you will write the details, okay? As you have done in the homework, I have seen it in this wonderful way. It's also good for the improvers and class 12 students for to answering the MCQ's question. The E part is, excuse me, is the removing, okay? Removing CO2. Now, if we remove CO2, my friends, we are decreasing the products and letting the patients go high. So, forward reaction. You can, if you want to know what are you going to write it, then listen to it. Removing carbon dioxide will decrease the quantity of the products at the time of equilibrium. And according to Lichatria's principle, the ratio Kc versus products upon reactant will basically uh, decrease because products are at the top. So if you remove the products, the ratio becomes less than Kc and when the ratio is less than Kc, what happens? The reactants are consumed and products are made in order to reach the value of Kc. So this is how you can answer the ninth question. If you have answered it, this lecture will help you reinforce. If you haven't answered it, it's gonna help. It, it will be a help for you. In the seventh question, uh, many students ask this one, which will, which one of will be not affected by pressure? So the one where the volumes are the same. In the, in the seventh question, the second part, volumes are the same. So no effect of the pressure for that. Okay. In which equilibrium, the change in temperature is uh, what? In which direction each will go would increase the temperature. Now, if you see the seventh question in the textbook, there are four reactions, two with positive delta H, two with negative delta H. So the, those with a negative delta H, if you increase the temperature, that's going to reverse direction. If the book is asking for direction, then it means in one and two, we raise the temperature, will help the reaction to go in the power direction. So that's it. I hope that you have uh, got your answers, which you had asked for me in, the, in your homework, which I've seen in your whatsapp messages so that was the work for um, from the homework and lee chatley principle now we are going to start our new lecture our today's lecture is basically uh, a new one and it is a solubility product so today i'm not sure because we already have consumed so much time in uh, explaining the previous topics and previous questions, I'm not sure if we can uh, uh, complete it now, but I can give you some introduction to it. I can tell you some ways to understand this topic. Okay? Now, before, you, uh, before I teach you solubility product, what is important? You, you should know what is solubility. Solubility is a quantitative measurement of uh, uh, any salt to be dissolved in a solvent. You know solvent, solute, and solution from class 9. If you, in case, if you don't know, then let me uh, help you with that, okay? If you have learned in class 9, there is a solute. You know, solute is the one. So we have a solute plus solvent is equal to solution. Have you seen these terms? Solute is that chemical which dissolve, which is dissolved. Solvent is which dissolves. And solution is a homogeneous mixture. 
okay so what is solute okay it is the chemical substance which is dissolved which you dissolve okay like sugar water sugar is solute water is solvent uh, or we can say the component of a solution which is present in less quantity okay uh, in any solution the uh, solute is present in less quantity it is the substance which is basic which basically is dissolved can you guess about the solvent what is the solvent solvent is basically you can say uh, this was solute now let's jump to solvent now solvent is also a chemical substance which is dissolved no which dissolves which dissolves the solute and it is the component of solution which is present in larger quantity There are two components of a solution solute and solvent solvent is present in larger quantity solute is present in lesser quantity like if you want to dissolve sugar in water now the water you will you take a, a two uh, glass of sugar in two spoon of water will it work that way no solute are always uh, less than solvent but and then what is the solution it is a homogeneous mixture of solute and solvent so solution it is a homogeneous looks like the same one face okay a homogeneous mixture of solute and solvent is called solution now solutions are important in our life in our life inside our body uh, industries laboratories kitchen solutions are, are much important for us and we uh, as a students of chemistry we make uh, so many solutions for the chemical reactions using different salts NaCl solution, KCl solution, AgNO3 solution, NaOH solution. And when you go to chem ke um, chemistry laboratory, you mostly you face solutions. You are dealing with solutions. Uh, we we don't use solid sodium hydroxide to do titration. We have to make a solution of it. So solution is made for different salts. Question: Do all salts dissolve equally all right if you take one spoon nacl in one glass of water and one spoon nano3 in another glass of water do you think they both will dissolve equally of course not okay different basically solute is ionized into ions and sometimes ions are big and sometimes ions are small so depending upon the ionic sizes the quantity of solute that goes in the solution is different for different salts if i look at the nacl a simple one table salt when sodium chloride is dissolved in water water is polar h plus h partial plus and o partial minus the water ions basically the water polar um, polar uh, molecule so they 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 uh, surround these na plus and cl minus ions and separate them so you get na plus right and you get cl minus now here i want to write something for you you can see that this is solid however they are aqueous they are inside the aqueous solution aqua means water this is what happens when nacl dissolves in water 
All right. Now, what happens when NaNO3 dissolve in water? Can you guess? If you take NaNO3, my friends, there will be an Na plus ion and there will be an NO3 minus ion. Now, NO3 minus ion is a radical, it's a very big radical as compared to chlorine. So if you take the water molecule at one glass, NaCl will be more dissolved, more easily dissolved, more quantity of NaCl will can go into the solution as compared to NaNO3. For example, if two spoon of NaCl can dissolve in 250 ml of water, at the same time, I tell you that NaNO3 will be much less than that, even less than one spoon. Because the ionic sizes are larger. Larger the ionic size, it's difficult for the water molecule to surround it and dissolve it. Okay. Now, if you take, uh, let's say you take uh, AgCl. Now, the same applies for the AgCl too. Because, let's say AgCl. Now, silver ions, silver is much big atom as compared to sodium. So, AgCl will be very less soluble in water as compared to NaCl. So now you have understood what is solute and solvent and solution and how different salts are solvents, solutes and how, what happens when they are dissolved, how, why do salts disappear in water? They disappear in water because the water molecules surround them and that's, this is called hydration and they are dissolved in it. Now, but not every salt can dissolve equally because every salt has a different ionic size. And if you are a chemist who works in the laboratory and you're, you are dealing with the solutions, okay, you must understand the knowledge of uh, solubility product because it will tell you how much of which salt is, will be dissolved, what chemicals are more soluble and what chemicals are less soluble. Okay, the chemicals, the salts, which, which are more soluble are called readily soluble and which are less soluble are called sparingly soluble. So from here, if we compare NaCl and AgCl, we are going to write here NaCl is readily soluble salt in water and AgCl is sparingly, sparingly means little soluble salt. Now what makes them, why is it so, okay, the, I, I mentioned ionic sizes uh, and also ionic charge, right, Na plus is one charge, okay, if you take Ca, like Ca is 2 plus, it will be dissolved more. I compare it, I will just copy it and I put right here. You have to focus on this, uh, this one salt. Calcium. Now, calcium belong to group 2nd A. It's going to make Ca 2 plus ions. Okay, 2 plus. Now, and then it is basically CaCl2, so you have two ions of Cl. Okay, now more charge, more charge, less size, more solubility. Less charge, more size, less solubility. So solubility as a term, it has two different sides, a qualitative side and a quantitative size. Qualitatively is the ability of a salt to be dissolved in a solution. Quantitatively is the how much amount of salt is dissolved in a solution to make a <coughs> solution completely saturated. Now this opens up a new chapter. What is saturated? Although this all is from class 9 but I know you might have not learned them there. Saturated, unsaturated, supersaturated. Okay. Now the way salts are 
sparingly soluble and readily soluble. Some salts are readily soluble, some salts are sparingly soluble. There are also solutions of three types. Okay, one is called the uh, unsaturated solution. Okay, unsaturated. Okay, the other solution is a uh, saturated solution. And the next one is called the super saturated solution. There are three types of solutions. Unsaturated, saturated, and super saturated. Now, I should explain them before we go to our main topic. This is not included in your book's topic, but you can copy them in your copy for your own knowledge. So what is unsaturated, okay? The solution which can dissolve more quantity, quantity of solute, okay? For example, uh, a glass of water can dissolve two spoon of NaCl. You dissolve only one spoon of NaCl. Now this solution is unsaturated, okay? Because it can take more NaCl. But if you, what, what you do instead, if you dissolve both teaspoons of NaCl, you even dissolve third, although it can't dissolve it, but you just dissolve it, and you just move it and move it and move it, you will see two salt, two spoon will be dissolved completely, one will just be moving around and not not, not disappearing in the, in the uh, water, no matter what you do. Now you can filter it, okay, and the insoluble salt is separated, and now this is called the saturated solution, okay? You can say the solution which cannot all right, dissolve more quantity, okay, quantity of solute, which is called, is known as the uh, saturated solution, which cannot further dissolve. Now, you guys, nowadays, the Ramzan, you must be making the solution, uh, the sharbat for you, okay? Now, if it, if it, uh, the, the, you don't make it saturated, it will be too sweet otherwise. So it's always unsaturated solution of sugar, okay? Too much sugar, if you dissolve too much sugar, that will be called as a saturated, okay? Now, if, suppose now you have a glass with one spoon of NaCl, a glass three spoon, but one spoon was filtered, two spoon, now you take a third glass and you put three spoon and you just move it around and then you heat it. The increase in the temperature will cause the solution to take up not just the two salt, two uh, spoons of salt which you put inside, even the third will also be dissolved, but only as long as the solution is hot. As soon as the solution will decrease its temperature, the third extra spoon of salt will start to reappear and make solid salt which will settle down on the base of the glass. A solution as such is called super saturated solution. Okay, we can say the solution which dis dissolve with the solution with extra quantity of salt uh, dissolved at high temperature because hydration is an endothermic process so uh, what the solution which uh, with extra quantity of salt dissolved in it at high temperature which will soon form insoluble invisible insoluble salt particles they are called as the precipitates or ppts okay uh, salt 
will soon form insoluble salt PPTs is known as super saturated solution. There are three types of solution saturated, super saturated and unsaturated. In fact, this will help you distinguish between two different quantity types of solutions. For example, on Aftar, okay, um, I made a Ruh Afzal Sharbat and you made a Ruh Afzal Sharbat, okay, for your Aftar people. What happens? My Ruh Afzal Sharbat becomes popular. Everybody wants to try that one and not yours. Why? Maybe because you your solution is a little bit more unsaturated than mine with Ruh Afzal. Okay, not with sugar, the Ruh Afzal. Okay, uh, I put, uh, let's say, uh, one cup of Ruh Afzal in a, um, one pitcher of water and you put a half cup. So this is different in unsaturation. The two Ruh Afzal are different because of that. Okay, uh, you made Ruh Afzal. Your sister made Ruhavza, your Ruhavza, everybody's asking for that one, give me that one, I don't want the other one. If the both are Ruhavza Sharbat, why are they they're differentiated? Because depending upon the amount of solute they contain, it's called concentration. So this if solution is uh, situated, it is a complete concentration, it's called concentrated. And if it is uh, unsaturated, it's called dilute. It can take more, more concentrations. But at a high temperature, you can cause it to take more than more concentration than it can actually hold. This will come out as precipitates very soon. Uh, so this knowledge is necessary before we go into the next topic, which is solubility product. Solute, solvent, solution. And why is this topic in sixth chapter? Because you can see the double arrows. The, the solubility is in itself a physical process, but it is also reversible. Okay, you can make extra salt to be dissolved from undissolved to dissolved, and you can move them from dissolved to undissolved if you know the knowledge of a solubility product. It's called also KSP. So this, this process is also a reversible process between undissolved salt and the dissolved salt or ions. Okay. Since this is a reversible reaction, that's why we are studying this in the sixth chapter. <coughs> and it will also have a kind of K KC, we can apply the law of mass action. Where will the ions go? They will go at the top. And where will the salt will go? At the bottom, products upon reactants. That KC here is called KSP, which is called the solubility product. Now let's take a quick review of the solubility product. Okay, I hope you will have some understanding from this. So, solubility of a solute in a solvent is the number of grams of solute necessary to saturate 100 grams of solvent at particular temperature. Solubility product is defined as a product of ionic concentration, Na plus Cl minus, okay? When dissolved uh, ions and undissolved ions are in equilibrium. So, when a saturated solution of sparingly or slightly soluble salt is in contact with the undissolved salt, equilibrium is always established between the undissolved salt and the dissolved ions. Okay, dissolved ions are in the aqueous phase, undissolved salt is in the solid phase, it's just floating over there. The ionic product, how many ions are formed, is called as the solubility product. Let us check it. KSP. KC, KSP. First, let's take AgCl is our uh, that sparingly soluble salt which we are going to dissolve. So, how will you write the uh, expression for it? Okay, it's very simple. Ag. 
Cl makes Ag plus and Cl minus. Now, if you apply law of mass action, what's Kc is equal to? The reactants are going as a denominator, AgCl, and the product are going as a numerator, the Ag plus and Cl minus. Now, the AgCl undissolved salt can be taken out, filtered, and weighed. This is constant. So that constant can multiply the Kc constant. And when they multiply, there is no change in the AgCl. Once you reach saturation, the, the solid AgCl is just floating around. This is an equilibrium. Ions are becoming AgCl and they are bringing back to the AgCl. Uh, so the AgCl is also a constant called K dash. Now Kc into K dash is equal to Ksp. Now you can see that Ksp is equal to Ag plus into Cl minus. Ag plus in a square bracket the active mass of the silver ions present in the solution at the time of equilibrium. Uh, Cl minus in square brackets, then the active mass of chlorine ion present at the equilibrium. Now their product is called Ksp. Now my dear fellows, if you have a salt which is readily soluble, you will see it's with a very high Ksp value. And if, uh, if uh, the, it is uh, uh, less soluble, it will have a less value of Ksp. These KSPs can be determined and put into a chart. So if you are a chemist and you can make a product with two salts, one salt dissolve less, its KSP will tell you. And one salt dissolve more, which salt will you take? The salt will dissolve more in order to make more products. So KSP will help the, the chemists to do the site. Okay, you can say KSP is defined as the product of ionic concentration between uh, the, the ions when the equilibrium is achieved between dissolved ions and undissolved salt in the solid phase. This is the definition of KSP and KSP is based on basically solutions and solubilities. So we use the KSP value to understand three conditions. If at any moment the ionic product is less than the value of, if it is equal to value of Ksp, that is called, solution is called saturated. Okay, look at this, if you can focus on the screen, my dear friends, if I can highlight it for you. When the Ksp is more than the ionic product, it means that the ions are less than Ksp. It means ions have to increase to reach Ksp. This is the unsaturated solution. It means that it can take up more ions. Okay? And if, we, if the ions are more, it means you have dissolved too much ions. This will come out. This is super saturated because you have dissolved too much ions. The number of ions have increased in the value of Ksp in the chart. This is called as a super saturated solution. And what if they are equal? Any guess? If they're equal, then it means that the solution is uh, not unsaturated. It is not super saturated. It is completely saturated. So KSP value in the charts help a chemist to choose a salt which is more soluble over his preference of other salts. Then he or she can also calculate at any, any moment whether solution is saturated or is unsaturated. Why will the chemist want it? Okay, I tell you. Do you purchase Colgate uh, uh, toothpaste? You do? Okay. How does the company make sure that every Colgate toothpaste contains all of those ingredients equally? You know, if you make a toothpaste, might be one toothpaste have more of one chemical and less of other chemical. So as a quality control chemist, you have to ensure that it is saturated. This case will help you. All right, uh, happens in all types of uh, all products because the soaps, the toothpaste, everything you buy over the shelves are basically solutions. And let me not forget about it. tablets, pharmaceuticals. If you read on a syrup, five ml of this syrup contains this many gram of this, and there's a whole list of it. So the chemist's job is to ensure that the solution is completely saturated with all salts. Okay, it should not be unsaturated. It should not be supersaturated.
all right and if the chemists can't do it if the company cannot do it the company will basically sell you a powder form okay and then ask you to dissolve water in it and make yourself a saturated solution so solutions are important in industry pharmaceuticals in our common life everywhere solutions are very much important and there are different types of solutions and uh, ksp it helps us to understand what type of solution uh, it is so this is the lecture on the sobri product today's you will fare just the definition of it some background and this application of it and uh tomorrow we will do the problems on the on which are based on the value of ksp so this is our second last topic in a sixth chapter we are soon on a way to complete our chapter very soon and we will also reorganize the test according to that one as well all right uh, before i complete my lecture I stop my lecture here i will like to uh, share with you something is that uh, I will make a, a separate video after some time uh, it's a small message to you and your parents we will uh, send that video in your whatsapp groups kindly check that and we need a positive response from your side on that this is that uh, lecture of today I hope this is help you understand these topics and if you have any question do your work share with me if you have any question just throw it on me thank you so much see you tomorrow with a new topic which is the problems on ksp thank you and goodbye